Hi, my name is Jen, JKC Mobile Notary, and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited today because we've got another heavy hitter interview that you're here for, and I'm so glad that you're here for it. This is a long interview, but it's a deep dive into Nick Colville's creation, the Notary e-journal, which makes our journals the palm of our hands on our phones or laptops. I'm so, phones or iPads, sorry. I'm so excited. He's got new stuff coming out. I'm so excited for you to meet him. But before we get there, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the remind bell. I know you guys are watching these videos. I see you in the algorithm, but the algorithm tells me that you're not all subscribed. So come join me and let's do this journey together. But if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go meet Nick. Welcome back to this week's video. I am excited about this video because today I have the awesome opportunity to interview one of the notary industry's greatest innovators, Nick Colville. Nick is a true entrepreneur with a variety of businesses and a job and jobs on his resume, including being a notary loan signing agent. He's the owner of Prestige Signing Prestige Signing Services, excuse me, in Campbell, California. He's also the creator of the Notary e-journal, and he gives continued support and encouragement to the notary community, cementing his role as an influential and important leader in our community. And that has earned him a spot on our heavy hitter series today. Nick, thank you so much for being here. I'm really looking forward to this time together. My pleasure. I'm, I'm happy to be here, and I appreciate just any chance to, to talk about what we're doing, to participate in the community. That's really what it comes down to for me. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm honored and, and I do ask for forgiveness if you hear a dog bark, um, I, have, I have two back here, so, uh, <laughs> it might happen. And, uh, if so, we'll just deal with that, but, but they yeah. are cute and I'm sure they'll make an appearance. So <laughs> hopefully the people watching like dogs, yeah. um, that'll be, that'll be perfect. But thank I you also, for having me. Jen. We also run the risk of that if a truck drives down the street. So we'll make it, we'll <laughs> yes. make it work no matter what. There we go. Okay, before we talk about your notary stuff, I'd like to talk about your life and work and businesses before you became a notary, because I've done some research um, for this interview, and I'd like to first ask about what part of your life included bodybuilding and bodybuilding shows? So that's that's a, a, a fun question to go back in time, um, and I feel like I've I've done a decent job of, of ensuring that the you know, I'm, I'm I'm a separate entity now than I used to be, just so things don't get too commingled. So it's fun that you were able to dig up some stuff and 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 give me a chance to talk about it, which is great. I, I did start off, gosh, um, I'm one of those one of those stories where I I I kept getting fired from every job I had, and this is going to lead up into where I got um and and bodybuilding. So I kept getting fired when I was 15, 16, 17, mm -hmm. and it was just trivial stuff. I, I finally decided I wanted to to try personal training, and and I was just getting to the gym as a late teen, early twenty something, and I really just wanted to um, continue trying to pursue some sort of physical fitness, which led to bodybuilding, and then at the same time pursue a career in that path. So I became a personal trainer while I was doing bodybuilding, and I started competing in bodybuilding shows as well, which was which was just a blast, um, and. And then I got fired from being a personal trainer as well, too, which was which was Jeez. the nail in the coffin. But it's it's interesting. And I'm sure people like Bill can attest to it because all these failures do lead to something good if you have the right mindset. That was the last time I got fired. And that's when I started my my first real self-employment independent business as a personal trainer. So I went to a different facility. I took my clients with me and I began to offer independent personal training services and what I learned in that time of my life from bodybuilding and from learning the ropes of, of self-employment are really what propelled me to where I am today. And, and not in a way that is, that is discussing the, the tangibles or, or maybe the actual businesses or the successes, but just being a man, being a good person, being a business person, understanding how to achieve certain things. That's where bodybuilding was very influential to me. I was, I was able to learn how to make changes in certain parts of my body with certain different things. Maybe it was a new therapeutic modality, a new nutritional method, a new training method. And, and you're forced to continue to, to learn and grow in that sense. And if you don't, then you can't continue to grow physically as a bodybuilder right. and especially as a natural bodybuilder because it was a, it's even more niche than just bodybuilding but it was 
bodybuilding without the use of of performance enhancing drugs and that really forces you to try to to hone in on what can make improvements get rid of what's not working right. and and these principles you can see can can translate almost perfectly into into business and and they did for me and I was fortunate enough to to have the right mindset to say here's what I accomplished in bodybuilding and and as a personal trainer and and now let me take some of what I learned and apply it to other businesses and see how that goes and then uh, it, it's gone well, fortunately, and I, I do attribute a lot of, of who I am and where I am to those learning lessons way back in the gym. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you that although I don't have a huge career of getting fired, I have always been a terrible employee. I'm just I'm just not really I was never really employable, really. And so when I hear you and, and I know some of us are built different, I think, in our lives where um, some of us are built to be employed. Some of us are built to be not, <laughs> to be our <laughs> own bosses. So um, now you currently own three companies. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's correct. The one that you've had the longest is Better Aesthetics. Can you tell me a little bit more about this one? I'd love to. So that is the one that originally stemmed from bodybuilding. So back when I was in bodybuilding and personal training, it was more common to to start to document things on YouTube and try making a YouTube channel to do videos and 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 you know that was kind of before Instagram was big before the social medias we have today um, YouTube was huge so I started to get a few uh, you know pieces of camera equipment and just kind of mess around and try to do some video work and that that led to uh, somebody in the gym re approaching me at one point and saying hey I'm 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 going to be the promoter of a, an upcoming bodybuilding show locally. And I know that you do camera work. Can you cover this show um, in terms of photography and videography? And 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 having the self-employed mindset, you know, one side of my brain saying, you've never done this before. You're way over your head. You have one <laughs> camera. And then the other side, the, what, what he saw and heard was, of course, I'd love to. This will be a blast, right? So it's a great learning experience because you just jump, you know, head first. Uh, hopefully your arms are in front of you, but you're still diving, right? So you're just right. diving straight in. And 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 I just dove straight into uh, trying to figure out how to provide a real legitimate official photography, videography services. And that quickly started to 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 blow up, if you will, um, doing one show, then people see me at that show, promoters see the work we do, then they want, you know, the same services at their mm -hmm. show. And it, it was a perfect segue for me as well, too, because as a competitor, when I was a bodybuilder, I was the kind of guy where it, it's a lot of work to get on stage. Mm -hmm. And and that goes without saying, but but I would always buy the photo packages because it took so much work to get there. Let me get my pictures um, and my video. And the services provided were just awful, like across the board. It might be uh, some really good stuff, but then some really bad stuff. And right. sometimes there was no video. And sometimes I would get like truly like four by sixes mailed to me. There was like five of them. It was just so strange. There was no consistency. So uh, that was a perfect segue for me to to fix that gap in the industry and say, you know what? We need to provide services that are consistent. Uh, people can depend on them when they purchase their their media uh, packages. And that that has caught on. And now we cover shows worldwide. Wow. Um, Germany, other countries. Um, we cover the biggest events for the WMBF, which is the World Natural Bodybuilding Federation. And it's just great because we have a big team, five, six, seven of us. We fly all over the place. We get to travel. Wow. We get to hang out with the competitors, which is fun because I used to be a competitor. So I still right. have a lot, uh, you know, uh, of, 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 I guess, my soul invested in that, in that mm. participation. And um, it's great also because I'm able to to give back to them and say, I, as a competitor, wanted services like these, but never got them. So let's make sure that you guys don't experience that same pain. And that's, you know, built us a company where we do all the photography, all the, the videography, the live streaming to the internet. Um, we offer a lot and the people love it. And, and we're just honored to be a part of that. So that's, that is better aesthetics. Um, that's what that business built into. Now we did branch off at one point pre-COVID to corporate media production as well too. And we had a great run with that. And then COVID hit and then 
yeah that kind of squashed a lot of the filming um and so now we're just back to filming the the live events uh, the bodybuilding gotcha. competition and stuff so gotcha. i think that this is a great story to tell because i think it's going to show that you are somebody who sees a need within a niche market and if you're able you step in and feel that need that's how that business this better aesthetic started right that's correct. Kind of doing it, but you saw that there wasn't consistency. You saw that there wasn't quality. And you said, I can provide consistency and I can provide quality. And this is how I'm going to do it. And you filled that hole. Wow. You've done that at least twice that I know of. <laughs> so I think it's pretty neat that it's just part of your MO as an entrepreneur. Um, yeah, but I, I think it comes down to I, just realizing that there might be an opportunity there. Um, and then, and then uh, approaching it with the right mindset and embracing it. And I think it does go back to well, a lot of people do use the word luck. I'm not a big fan of the word luck, but a lot, of, a lot of people also can consider luck in a more uh, a, a objective sense to be. And I like this saying a lot. Luck is more so just a combination of opportunity and preparedness. Yeah. And I love that analogy because it's true. If you are prepared enough to accept the opportunity and the opportunity presents itself, yep. you have what outsiders might consider to be lucky circumstances. Mm -hmm. But That's really, right. you 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 can't you know deter from the amount of work that that person had to put in, right. um, even just being prepared, just, just to achieve preparedness for that opportunity, um, and which includes the mindset that you have to have. Um, so I'm not the biggest fan of, of, of the word luck, but you're 100% correct. You just keep your eye open for opportunities wherever they might come from and then you'll be prepared to, to act on them uh, accordingly. Well, also having the pulse of whatever industry you're in helps with that, right? Being, yeah. being really involved and aware of what's going on around you helps with that. So how did you transition from that? So bodybuilding, better aesthetics to being a notary, what move, what inspired that move or inspired that addition to your entrepreneurial collection? So my wife, um, I'll blame her for that. Um, and it, it's actually interesting. I can plug her in because there's a, there's an inside joke amongst her and I that every, everything she's done, every hobby she's, she's tried to, to, to take up, I've, I've hijacked and turned into a, 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 a business or a revenue stream. She, she was the one who first wanted to get into photography. And then I kind of just took her camera and started messing around with it. And then better aesthetics um, is what we have now out of that. So um, she being an escrow officer, she's an escrow officer. What she, she now she works and she's been promoted, so she's county manager, um, assistant county manager um, for Chicago Title Company in our in our county. So we're in Santa Clara County uh, in, in the Silicon Valley, and so she's right. been, but she's been an escrow officer for a very, very, very long time. Um, and that industry is is I've, I've I've learned so much about it, and I have learned to have the utmost respect for uh escrow officers in general right. um, and the amount of stress they're put under i oh, mean yeah. they they th there's the agent not to the, not to not to say the agents aren't worthy of of their their payouts but there's the agent and then there's the person behind the scenes that does all the work that's the escrow officer mm -hmm. and some states aren't escrow states right but california is and 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 these are the people who they are always the first one to be blamed by everybody involved because they have to be the middleman for everybody involved. Wires, uh, money movement, documentation, recordings, everything. So everybody just blames them, gives them very little credit, mm -hmm. offset at their fees that they charge on the settlement statement. Um, and then everybody else, like the agents and the other people, they they uh, they take the credit for, for a successful closing more yeah. often than not. So the, these escrow officers, they're the unsung heroes and the amount of stress that they're under is is phenomenal. I remember after a few years of just being more aware of her work environment, I used to think, why is escrow almost 95, 100% women? It's almost all women. You go it into is. an escrow office, you will be hard pressed to find uh, a male escrow officer. And mm -hmm. I think it's because of the way the stress is handled. And I've seen the camaraderie between the people in the office where they'll just come together and they'll just help each other out in ways that I don't think men would, would do as easily or as well for right. example i couldn't handle getting blamed for everything all the time <laughs> even though i was doing everything and above and beyond to, to, to close that transaction 
I think there would be a lot of cursing. There'd be a lot of phone calls being slammed down, a lot of fist fights in the office. Yeah, yeah. But women handle stress differently. Mm-hmm. And, and so when you look at the demographics of what makes up escrow, it should be illuminating to you. And you should be able to say like, gosh, okay, well, you know, h- how do they operate and why do they operate that way? And so watching my wife work um, has been amazing and inspiring. But at one point I just said, hey, um, who I was looking at a settlement statement at one point, I can't remember the circumstances, but I just said like, who, who, who's getting paid all these fees? I know you escrow, you're cutting the checks a lot of these places. Um, and that led to the conversation of like, who gets that notary fee? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm a big person of, 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 of reduced barrier to entry into a field. I don't like something that um, requires a lot of, 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 of certifications, education. Right. Right. I'm, I'm more of like a self-taught. I, me and my wife both have no college experience at all, also no degrees. And and I don't feel like that's ever hindered us because you just have to have the right mindset again. Right. Um, so, you know, I said, God, who, who's getting that notary fee? And she said, well, the notary. I said, okay, well, how do I become a notary? And so then I, I, I decided, well, let me just get my notary commission and then go through the two-year process to become approved through Fidelity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that I can do signings for them and, and take that two year time to to learn and do other types of signing work um, just so that I could I could keep that in house. Right. One of the biggest problems for people as a signing agent is how do I get more business? And I had a wife. I still have the same wife, but I, <laughs> I had a wife who was directing the business right. wherever she wanted. So the notary who she likes, she would give the business to. So I just said, well, you have to give it to me because I'm your husband. I'm your husband. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and it, and it worked. She did. She gave me the business, which was nice. And, and so um, that that's what led me, honestly, to be to be a signing it. agent. It was truly just opportunity. Who who's getting this payment and how do I be that person? Yeah. And and that became that person. Pretty that's pretty that's a really cool story. I haven't heard that journey. I'm <laughs> yeah. sure there's lots of journeys like that, but I've not heard that journey to this role as a notary and loan signing agent. So well, I'm, I'm honored to be the first. <laughs> how long were you doing this before you saw another space that needed filling where you brought into the network your um your notary e-journal so that was almost identical to i guess i'm just i'm just beating a dead horse on the same story over and over <laughs> again it was just there was a, a something that wasn't available in the market that i needed um which was a better german solution so i have you know like like we all have right the old mm-hmm. the old journals and 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 as i became really busy as a signing agent you know i i started to just realize that like god you just gotta do all these thumb prints. Oh, yeah. You gotta, you gotta do all this writing, and and I'll tell you, I, I can't show you because this has real injuries, so that yeah. would be, you know, pretty illegal. But um, my handwriting is awful. It's horrible, and and so as a notary, it's interesting because people would expect it to be nice, and it's really, yeah. really bad. So um, <laughs> I I just got tired of of writing, and I, I and I went to look. There must be some type of app available, right? So I looked on the marketplace. Um, the only one that was available was Notary Act, um, and they're still pretty much our only competitor. And but they don't have they weren't California compliant. They don't have any any um, thumbprint technology at all. Gotcha. And I remember I emailed them directly and I asked what their solution was. And at this point, I've told the story many times, but at this point, I was told that I should probably just take a picture of the ink thumbprint. So have the the signer still do an ink thumbprint somewhere. And then take a picture of that and have that picture, um, you know, in that journal entry that's in their app. And that wasn't a, a viable solution for me. Right. Not, not only do I, I, I personally feel like that's borderline non-compliant with the law and illegal, but I, I also it didn't fix the the problem, which was it's taking too long, and the signers still have to do ink. I, mm-hmm. I need to get rid of that. I needed to, to solve that problem. So. I reached out to a couple of uh, friends of mine who I've had business relationships with in the past who I knew were in the tech industry. And I just asked them if they thought that this was something we could start to develop. Um, and, and and he just took a leap of faith with me and said, well, mm-hmm. let's give it a shot. You know, who knows yeah. if there's a market for it? We had no idea. So yeah. we developed our first iteration on a <laughs> Microsoft Surface tablet. Mm-hmm. So on a Windows environment and I was just lugging that around with me to my signings, testing it and everything. And, and it was actually a USB thumb, a little th- th- thumbprint thing. So we plug it into the mm-hmm. USB um, and we we just started the 
mess around with it and, and see if if it was something that we could develop into a better application over mm -hmm. time, which we did. We 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 had success with it on Windows and then quickly realized, well, we did it on Windows, but Windows is not the intended now, operating system for most of our users if they're in the field, mm -hmm. right? We need to make it mobile. So we need an iOS and an Android app. So we brought in more development and and just started building on mobile. And then we launched at the end of, right at the end of 2020, like right before the, the pandemic or right around that same time. So the, that's how Jurat came to be. And it's it's been exciting mainly because we still are the only California compliant notary mm -hmm. journal, in my opinion. Um, because of the the digital thumbprint capture that is uh, digitally affixed to that entry we're not telling you to take a picture of it right um it, it's it's as legitimate as you could possibly get and it's right. it's it's fun knowing that there is such a, a a hole in the market and that we were able to to fill it with a product that has so far done well i have to tell you something because you're are you familiar with Clyde Hepner and the integrity journal of course okay so as a notary, I started with your normal journal and quickly, because I started in 2021 in the middle of it all. So I very quickly got very tired of filling everybody's names out and having them thumbprint a hundred times. And um, I moved, I found his and moved into his, his story for why he created his journal is exactly the same as yours. My handwriting sucks. I write too big. It just wasn't working. So I called the secretary of state and he's in Missouri can I create my own? And they said, basically, yeah, if you want, as long as it fits within the, you know, the constraints of what we need. And that's exactly how he came up with his journal. So my journey from journals was the normal Clyde's and then you, holy crap, Nick, life changing. And I wish I would have found it when I first started because I did a lot of in hospital COVID POAs. You know how much easier it would have been instead of throwing away pens and throwing away and using um, one-time ink strips that that ink never comes off your finger to be able to disinfect my phone and my thumbprint. I'm a loser for not starting sooner, but I am now an avid, huge fan, love this technology. It makes me look like a badass at signing, nice. by, the rec by the way. I can't tell you how many times a day I pull out my iPad and my little thumbprint reader and they're like, holy crap. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That, 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 there is a, a, yeah. a, a, a really there's a there's a coolness factor that that I realized quickly you know because as we went to develop it and then I was just the guinea pig I was taking it in the field before we had launched it for a long time and so uh, I was getting this great reception and 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 it might sound interesting or, or silly to notaries outside of California mm. but because they don't have to capture the thumbprints right but if you have to capture the thumbprints and as a loan signing agent if you have to capture five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thumbprints, and then you have two signers or three signers at a signing, oh, you, you quickly realize how painful it is. And 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 for everybody, yeah. not just me as a notary, mm -hmm. but for them as a signer, I would have people who would who would, you know, say, okay, well, I, I we're ready to get the journal. You know, let's take a, a break. This will take about half an hour or 45 minutes. Yeah. And, and they would want to get drinks. And so I would pull out my my digital thing and 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 we you know, again, we, we remove the redundancy by just capturing the information once and then uh, yeah. uh, logically associating it with the entries correctly. And and they would just write like, wow, that was it? 60 seconds? We're done? <laughs> like, yeah, we're, we're done. We're done. So the, the coolness factor is is uh it w w was better than I expected. And it, it, is, it is nice to hear people talk about it because at the end of the day, we want to make your life easier. We want to make oh, their we, life easier. We do. But, we, but if we can, if we can, just provide a better experience that allows you as a notary to, to focus on the signers and the event that's taking place in their life, then, then we're really having a great impact. And then it's, it's no longer about the semantics of having to journal and capture all this information. It's just, let's focus on you and these great documents. This is awesome. You got to buying a home, whatever mm -hmm. it might be. You got to trust. We're just putting this trust together. We can focus on you mm -hmm. and, and not, not what I have to do by law, which is cumbersome to you. And that's, I think, the greatest thing about our product. Oh, you hit the nail on the head. You removed the, dis not the distraction, but the inability to connect, yeah. right? Your time for connecting and a loan signing is at the end of a loan signing. The rest of it's yeah. very transactional. I'm, we can still talk to everybody, but you're right. You have given time back. 
to your notaries and the ability to focus on the thing that matters most, which is building relationships. And you do that looking them in their eyes, not down yeah. at your journal. So, mm-hmm. oh, I'm a huge, huge fan. Are there any states that don't allow that this can't be used in? So it's tough because we get that question a lot. And and we use terminology that might not be as black and white as some people want. So do a lot of people, first and foremost, a lot of people ask, is this approved in my state? And that's the, the wrong the wrong terminology to use because Secretary of States don't approve or deny specific companies and or products. Mm-hmm. They they create you know a list of requirements Almost, for yeah. information that you have to capture, and they may create also a list of of requirements for the environment, i.e., digital or it must mm-hmm. be bound. So we we like to use the, the terminology: Are we compliant with that state's law or not? And there right. are only four states that are a little bit more questionable, but we also have to think about the no, the notorial event or the notarization um, environment itself. So, for example, um, in Missouri, uh, Hawaii, Arizona, and uh, Nevada. Now, Hawaii has been, been in the middle of changing a lot of their laws. Um, they used to be on our list of, of kind of like a red flag just for, for notaries to do a little bit more research on. Yeah. And um, Washington State up north, not D.C., um, so if I'm not mistaken, Hawaii has since um, changed the wording to remove the restrictive verbiage of it needing to be X by Y dimensions. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and what's interesting, too, is that even there's even states that, that state in the law that it must be bound and then have clarification that the word bound could also imply that it could be electronic. Hmm. Um, and so it, it, it is a very gray area. And gotcha. the only time we say that we are completely not compliant with the state's law is if they do not have approved for use um, electronic notarizations or RON, hmm. and they have verbiage that, that stipulates the dimensions of that actual notary journal itself. And that's actually very rare. Most states like Missouri, for example, or Washington, they use verbiage that states that you know, it might need to be a, a hardbound book um, with numbered pages. But at, mm-hmm. also, if you look at the fact that maybe that state has approved RON, for example. Right. So as a RON journal, we have users who use our journal for just their RON signings. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, yes, we can be used for remote electronic notarization, but not for in-person tangibles, right? So oh, that's, that's why I, I don't like to just say, well, these are the w- states where you can't use us mm-hmm. because you could still use us if you do wrong. Right. Um, or if you do electronic notarizations. Right. Uh, but then that state might be a little bit more strict in terms of the requirements of the for the in-person tangible. So it really comes down to understanding the the notarization environment. Is it digital? Is it remote online notarization? Or is it in person? Mm-hmm. And then from there, looking at the code and saying, you know, pretty much uh, it doesn't restrict or forbid the use of it. So exactly. again, those states, we have Missouri, um, we have Washington. Arizona and Nevada are just the the ones that stipulate the the in person tangibles and the dimensions and gotcha. the well bound, um, okay. but they also may have RON approved and then we are completely compliant with that. So gotcha. well, and if people need to know more about their state, your website does a great job of answering the question for them. You can pick your state or you can look at a map and it'll show you the different states' rules or compliance levels. So. A lot of research has gone into this to make sure that this can be a user-friendly product. And I think that that just shows how much you care about what you put out into the world. So yes. that's yes. awesome. We, co- we constantly update the website and, and, and we focus our resource pages and, and, and our research on you know, specifically notary laws that affect you know journaling and mm-hmm. that way when you go there you can find out everything you need to know about journaling for your state we have interactive maps we have a list of all the states mm-hmm. you can click on it we also have um we've started to integrate some new technologies that are like like chat bots where you can just go there and it's going to know your location based on your ip address and so you could just click is it compliant with my state we're going to send you in the right direction show you the law um and make sure that it's as easy and frictionless as possible for you right. to understand as best as you can because a lot of it is educating notaries a, a lot of these people are newer notaries too who are yeah. coming on board and they might not even you know fully take understand into consideration their states. Cor- yeah correct yeah yeah and so we want to make sure that people are confident with the decision because i don't want people 
to feel like either they're being pressured to use any product at all mm -hmm. um, or that they're being misled by having somebody like me on a video say, yes, we are approved by your state. <laughs> yeah. We're not approved by any state because the secretary of state doesn't do that. Yeah. They do not approve. They have very strict requirements for steel manufacturing, for example, mm -hmm. but not for journal manufacturing. So I, I like to clarify to the people. I'm, I just want to be as transparent as possible. I'm so. glad that you did that. I think that's an important, important thing for people to understand when they're looking at any notary product, specifically journals. So, okay. I want to go over how the notary e-journal stores journal entries. I know how they do this, but I'm going to ask you to explain it for those that do not. Awesome. How, when, once we've done a, once we've done our our um, our notary appointment and we've filled out the journal and we've saved it and it uploads, where is it going? Before I lose my train of thought, yeah, because that question you have written down and and you remember it. I I I we were speaking earlier about Clyde's journals. Yeah. Um, Clyde, love your journal. Here it is. This is a nice plug. <laughs> and I, I just wanted to, I, I wanted to, I didn't want to any viewer to feel like that has come across as, as that I, I that I might not like his product or that we are competitors oh, no. or that I don't yeah. support it. I love Clyde's products. I've chatted with them. We've had booths next to each other at events. And I, I do tell people a lot that your job as a notary is to journal by law, most likely. Um, and that's very important. So for some people, an electronic journal might not be the solution for you. We do have a True. lot of users who have been notaries for 20 years, 30 years. They have it down pat mm -hmm. for how they do it, you know, written. And for people who love uh, keeping a written journal, uh, Clyde's journal is fantastic, especially if you're a loan signing agent. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to clarify so that um, I don't feel like, um, you know, I, I have to explain to Clyde at some point uh, <laughs> that I was talking bad about his product because it, we're looking at, you know, a great product is yeah. in, in the, the tangible notary journal space and then there's ours. So, so I, I don't mean it to. No, to, don't, don't worry about it. You guys forward. need to know that you're to get, you are, you are on this notary resource page together because I think you are the best journals for notaries either or. So you're not competitors. I don't believe that. I don't see you that way, but I appreciate you clarifying. Awesome. So so sort of back to that question about how the data is stored. Now, this is one of those, this is one of those really tough conversations to have with people who are not in the software development space. Um, and that 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 category has included me mm -hmm. for the longest time, pretty much up until now, um, you know, with this company. And even now, a, a lot of my knowledge comes from asking my developers clarifying questions over and over again. How do mm -hmm. I translate this into yeah, English simple, for our A simple users? English version yes. of this. Yeah. Yes, I need people to, to, to get a better grasp on it. And one of the things we have done to provide a better sense of transparency and confidence is you know, go after those SOC, the SOC um, certifications that we have achieved. So we could discuss that a little bit later, but that's it gives you some insight into to what I try to do. And I try to help people understand how it works as, as best as possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, people need to also understand that it's very complicated, the process right. of storing data. So right. we use Amazon Web Services um, mm -hmm. to, to host. They're probably the most uh, widely used by some of the biggest companies yeah, uh, yeah. out there. Um, we have, so the way our actual network diagram looks, we have the mobile app and we have our web app. And those both go into EC2 instances um, and those have uh, an API server and a web server. Um, this information then goes into the RDS or the production database. And then we have S3 buckets for storing things like the signatures, um, the signing backups. And so that information, once it goes from the or, or the place of origination, which is at this point, you know, just in your mobile app. Yeah. Then it goes through the NC, the the EC2 instance, which is then going to ensure that the data is is collected, parsed properly, um, uh, and then stored where it's supposed to be stored, and, and then encrypted if it's supposed to be encrypted. So the information goes into the digital environment, into the cloud. You can access it from multiple different, um, you know, locations and devices and whatnot, but. Uh, deeper terminology in terms of how data is stored, um, blobs of data, so B-L-O-B, that was referred to as blobs. Um, data is packaged together uh, and is stored together so that you can then, you know, pull it and look at it in a, in a way that looks like an actual 
signing that you expect it to look like. So, for example, a lot of people expect um, it to look a certain way, but when it's stored, you know, in the database yeah. in, in right. Amazon, it won't look like the PDF printout we present for you, right? right? So, our APIs make sure that the information is stored in a way that when we pull it back, it's going to look the way it's going to look. It's going to go where it's supposed to go right. and that it is encrypted if it needs to be encrypted. So it goes from your device to uh, Amazon where it is pretty much managed um, and encrypted and it is very safe right. from that point on. Then uh, you can do whatever you want with it when right. you need to, to request it. If somebody's um, requested your journal entry and the coolest thing about this, I want to say you're getting into a lot of the mechanics of it, but the cool thing about this is Instead of having to open your journal and photocopy one line, you can download it and print it in one form and it shows the entire activity of that signing. It's really, 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 really user-friendly and awesome. So I can't imagine how hard it was to do that. But I think the question I'm really getting at is, is it secure where it is for the, for the user? Is, there, is that information secure on the web or on the cloud? It is. It is very secure. And and the the way we provide that confidence to our users is with those SOC certifications. Gotcha. And so just to briefly discuss what that is, you have the option of either just taking my word um, as a company owner, as a businessman, taking my word that your stuff is safe, or if if the company goes above and beyond, which I'm I'm proud to say that we have, mm -hmm. um, you don't have to take my word anymore because we voluntarily pay a, a good amount of money for independent auditing firms to come in once a year and they dig into our processes. They're digging into everything from the minute details of who has access on your development team to each environment and are those uh, login credentials secure enough? Are they? Are you guys using these two-factor authentications, authenticating apps? Mm -hmm. um, so access to the environments in the first place, You know, how is the development environment to begin with? Is it a secure development environment on your local hosts? Uh, when you push your code changes, what are the approval processes for the code changes? How do you guys review that? How do you guys handle the situations of X, Y, Z? So the, the the independent auditing firm comes in and they they spend months and months just pretty much digging through everything that you do and then providing this what they call a SOC report. Now this is a right. SOC two type two that we've done both. So a type one, just to clarify for people who might be interested, a SOC two type one uh, report or an audit is a pretty much a, a, a very short time frame, a pretty much a window of like uh, April 1st, this is the time frame in which you are providing us access and, mm -hmm. and, and insight into your systems. And we're going to judge everything accordingly. A type two audit is going to be, you're giving us access for a longer period of time, three, mm -hmm. six or 12 months. So oh, now wow. we're not just ensuring that you have these things in place at Today. one point in time, yeah. but you have them managed and continued sustainably for that entire period of time, which is even more strict. And we have completed both of those types of wow. reports. Um, and, and that is how, as a business owner, I can say that I can provide that type of confidence that the information is going to be as secure as possible. Right. Now, it, bad things can still happen. Um, there's, mm -hmm. there's no way to... to 100% eliminate that risk. So it's important for people to know that because, because at the moment something goes into the cloud, it's a digital environment, there are a lot of naysayers. There are a lot of people who, who doubt that type of environment and the security of it. And they're not wrong. That's why we go above and beyond to get those audits done so that people can at least have a better sense of peace. And they yeah. say, this company is going above and beyond to ensure that our data is protected. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, the amount of personally identifiable information that you carry around in your journal is immense. Yes. And I don't think notaries truly realize the ramifications of a lost journal, especially mm -hmm. like in a state like California. Like oh, yeah. As a signing service owner, if any notary that I have hired to do a signing for, for we'll just say fidelity, mm -hmm. they report that that journal was lost then the process that everybody F and F in the signing service has to go through is intense. We have to try to find out the entire date range of that journal. What other signers information could have been compromised, i.e. how many times did I hire that, that notary and mm -hmm. how many other people do I have to alert? Because now I have to alert them that that data may have been compromised. 
And so things like a, a lost notary journal, a stolen jo notary journal, which happened more often than I'd like to, to admit, um, that's very bad, very yeah. bad for everybody involved. Yeah. And so our goal is to reduce as much as we can uh, the chance of that occurring, that which happening. I believe a digital environment is going to be a way more secure area um, than than uh, just a hardbound journal that has but all I that But I think that there. we as a society are moving there anyways. When you're seeing the huge influx of RON, which is remote online notarization, which means people notarize things the same way we're having a conversation right now, we are moving there. I, but I think the steps you're taking to provide as much security as humanly possible, because you're right cannot be a hundred percent on either side of the aisle, right? I left my bag in my car when I went into Target and somebody broke into my car and took my bag. That hasn't happened to me, but I'm saying that's a simple mistake that can cause catastrophic damage. So I love that. Um, I want to ask a question about how the notary e general handles um, the situation when a notary dies or quits or, you know, whatever it is, when they die in California, they have to submit their journal to the, um, I think the county for destruction, right? Or for storage. So they, not for not for destruction, for storage. And that's in California. So yeah, your, yeah. your county of commission, your local county of commission, where are you going to deposit that within 30 days after you are no longer commissioned? Um, or in the case of your personal representative, if you die, mm -hmm. uh, then the same responsibility is bestowed upon them. And, and every state is different with how right. they manage that. Many states, I'd say our state is actually pretty uncommon with having it um, deposited at that uh, the county clerks. Many states have a central repository that they discuss uh, having available uh, for notaries to, 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 to put so on a statewide level, not at the county level. And then many states also just require it to be retained for X amount of time and then destroyed. So gotcha. there are a lot of different things out there that we have to be aware of as a company for how people will be managing and handling their data in California. Um, you know, being that you have to provide it, um, and, and in, in most cases, it's going to be in a tangible form, you would just export for in our platform, you would export the PDFs by going onto the website, export the PDFs, and then most likely printing them out. Now, there are some states in which, again, the central depository is an electronic environment. And so mm -hmm. they can just export the PDFs and then deliver the PDFs in a digital file. So it's it's every state's going to have its own things. Gotcha. Um, and unfortunately for us in California, I haven't met a county uh, clerk that will accept it yet in a PDF form. It's always got to be printed. printed. Um, and so that's also why we hmm. have developed. Um, and hopefully that'll change, by the way. Hopefully, you know, they'll accept things digitally. But we when we have our exports now, we, we don't only provide you with the option to export but we give you the option to export what we call a, a proof of sequentiality report, which just goes hand in hand with that, that export and allows you to confirm in our system the actual order of those journals. Which the signing is still place, right. Correct, yeah. And so in a state like ours where they do need it to be sequential, that's very important, and we take mm -hmm. that very seriously. Many states aren't nearly as strict about that, but that proof of sequentiality report just gives you a quick overview of how the back end has them ordered, mm -hmm. and that way you can provide that report with the actual, you know, full export PDF, which is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll have it more is. to provide. Yeah. It, right. it, and, and we are working on streamlining um, the templating to make it a little bit, you know, smaller file size, a little bit better layout. I mean, there's, there's always something that we're trying right. to work on. But it also uh, means that the re representatives, we're specifically talking about when a notary dies, right? If the representative has, has to know how to do that, will Jurat Inc. help them? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So they can absolutely reach out to us and we'll help facilitate that transfer of, of records of information. Um, that's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so you already brought this up, but um, the, it's Jurat Inc. It's the Notary E-Journal works on iOS and Android, correct? That's correct. Yep. Can you work on it? Can you use it on your phone and your tablet? Yes, you sure can. Okay. Yep. So we do have a lot of notaries who just prefer to carry their tablet with them, like a I separate do. tablet just for the signing and vibe, which is cool. I prefer to just, I mean, I want it to be so on the go. Yeah. I could just pull this out, boom, 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 super quick. But we do have a lot of notaries who just throw in their iPad into their, their, you know, lap, uh, their, their laptop bag or whatever yeah. they bring with them. Uh, super. I easy. like the surface area better for I specifically older signers. Yes. Have to use their finger or if they use my Apple pen, 
I've found that on my phone, it's harder for them, for me, not for everybody, but enough that I would like, I like it on my, I like it on my iPad. But when I forget my iPad, Nick, the coolest thing about this, guess what? I never forget. Yeah. Your phone. Yeah. 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 Um, So how do you take, okay. So I don't know if I've, if we've covered this, but basically what the notary e-journal is, is an app for your phone or your tablet that you download from the app store or wherever else it's available. Right. There's a subscription fee. And what is that fee to subscribe to the notary e-journal? So to come full circle with where you're going is, is we are a notary journal app on iOS and Android. We are the only California compliant notary journal app with digital fingerprint technology, which is what we develop in house. But we also have users in almost every other state, right? Mm-hmm. 40 plus states use us. So you don't just have to be in California. Mm-hmm. Um, there are, uh, you have a free trial. The free trial is 14 days. Mm-hmm. You can create up to five free signings throughout that 14 day process. And you have access to all the features. That way you could really get your hands on it, touch and feel it. And, and that goes back to what I said a while ago, which is that I don't want anybody to feel pressured. And I want you as a notary as you journal to be confident in your journaling solution. That's mm-hmm. really important. And so- yeah. Uh, I want you with the free trial to be able to mess around with it and feel like, gosh, I, I like this or I don't like it. Um, and then make your decision from there. Then after that, you can upgrade to the uh, monthly subscription or we have a yearly option as well too. So either $9 a month or $90 a year. And then I really the- wanted you to say $9 a month. I was waiting for it to come out of your mouth because yep. people need to understand that this is incredibly friendly to our budgets. And it's not like, I know a lot of people are worried about adding new apps, adding new things, but this is not going to be a bank buster. It's, it's really not. And it's $90 if you want to do annual, which is still, honestly, it's just really reasonable. And I think um, it makes it much more user accessible. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about thumbprints because you can't do a thumbprint directly on the app, right? You have to have a separate tool to do that. And you have, you have linked up with a company to provide a thumbprint reader. Is that right? That's correct. So I'm going to circle right back to the last question real quick, because I I do know that we're, this video might be viewed months from now. Mm -hmm. We are going through a very large set of feature release coming out in the Mm -hmm. next couple of weeks, really, really big features. Uh, We've been developing for a long time um, that we could talk about in a bit, but what I'm what I'm trying to circle back to is that there may be a price increase between okay. now and when people see this, and that would be our first price increase since we launched over two three years ago. So I, I do want to just clarify that, and it, and this I, I hate price increases, but it's something that I have been considering for a long time because of the amount of development. Mm-hmm. So just so that people don't see the video maybe in August or September, and then they say, "Wait a second, that schmuck said something, and <laughs> it's not true." So, um, so I, there, I got that off my yeah. chest, which is and anything great. that, anything that changes with this information, I will update in the description for viewers that view this past that time. So perfect. Yeah. That. So, so let's talk about thumbprints. Yeah. So thumbprints. So here we go. We do all the fulfillment and shipment in-house, which is awesome. So oh. pretty much here's how it started. We, we, we at first had a middleman, uh, who would, uh, fulfill all the orders for, for the thumbprint scanners and developing technology that allows you to digitally affix a thumbprint from a, a scanner is is not an easy process mm-hmm. and um, the problem is that there's a disconnect between the hardware manufacturer and or the fulfillment center that just fulfills the order and then its intended use or the the end user when they get it um, is it going to be self-explanatory is the product going to make sense and these aren't meant to just be right out of the box, turn it on, and then you could just do something with it. Because what kind of app do you use on a regular basis that just needs thumbprints, right? (laughs) It's not common for you to have an app that needs it in the first place. So if you bought this and you didn't have any instructions, you would turn it on and then you would say, well, that was great. What What do I do with it? How does it communicate, right? So the actual technology development was more so getting a piece of hardware like this to be uh, you know, functional within our ecosystem and then to be secure, to be encrypted, to be right. safe, uh, to transfer that data in a safe way. That's mm-hmm. the development itself. Um, and so that's also why we ended up uh, fulfilling in-house instead of dealing with that middleman. 
Um, I, I, I wanted to be able to provide the, 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 the better, so number one, a better, a better branding experience. So yeah. people get something that is branded for us um, right. and that they, they also have, you know, an understanding that the product and all the support for the product is in-house for us mm -hmm. because we would have people that would reach out to the middleman for product mm -hmm. support. And then sometimes even just direct it to the manufacturer in Korea, the secular, oh, and, wow. and reach out to them for support. But they can't help support the same way. And excuse me, I'm gonna let my dog go potty. Okay, um, she's been at that window for a while. Mm -hmm. They can't provide the same support because the support is at an app level, not a hardware level. Right. So that's why we ended up going the route of of doing all fulfillment in house. So we just have these developed, um, you know, and, and shipped straight from the manufacturer from Korea, and then we deliver or we ship everything accordingly. This is the scanner itself. So it's yep. a, a Bluetooth, portable Bluetooth thumping scanner, um, internal battery that lasts forever. Uh, there you go. You got it. Yes. Yeah. yeah this, and this is, this is what really just changed the game. Cause when we started development, we were just, you know, buying a million different products to try to find one that was going to fit the bill. Mm -hmm. This is the one that fits the bill. Portable. Again, the Bluetooth, um, the internal battery is, is phenomenal. I, oh, I, yeah. I, oh, I can't tell I can you go, how long it lasts. I can go almost a week. It depends on how many signings I have, but um, I won't even plug this in unless I'm, I'm not going to be, I know I don't have signings for the next three days because it just holds its battery. But I have to tell you what my favorite thing is about this, this, whoop, I'm throwing it, this use, this little thing you've put here, uh, right? Yes. My blurring is going to be that. So how, um, the user is holding it like this with their thumbprint like this. And I'm over here where I'm not right. on my iPad, but it's easy to hold in your hand. It's, it's ergonomically easy for everybody. It's, right. it's really remarkable. It's, it's the coolest thing. Now, this is not live scan. You're not using this to run background checks. You're not using this to do FBI or DOD background checks. This is specifically tied to the notary e-journal and your signing event on that journal, correct? That's correct. Now it is an FBI certified sensor, so that's mm -hmm. that's the, the 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 level of quality that is inside internally, but right. it is not linked to any database that that man manages and, and and helps facilitate live scan and whatnot. This is solely for use, um, you know, in integration with our software. That's correct. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's 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 listen. listen. I know you know I'm just a huge fan, but the reason I wish I would have jumped on this earlier is is this specifically being able to wipe it down with a Clorox wipe to disinfect it. I disinfect it between every signing. It's it's amazing, Nick. It's just yeah. amazing. So well, and, and being that we launched right when COVID hit, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it was it was just uncharted territory. It was it, it was great because myself and our users could walk in there and and wipe it down in front of them and mm -hmm. still capture that thumbprint whereas mm -hmm. the rest of the people were were putting their thumbs into this the mysterious ink pad of potential covid um, God, you know, know. disaster or the one and, time use strips which are yeah just and, and it, it just it, it was yeah. it was a mess and 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 I'm sure you had many people at the beginning you know who would who who might might look at you strange if you're trying to get them to go into like an ink pad you know they would just it's it's not it, covid was just getting hit, hitting and yeah. shutdowns were happening and so so you're right it's easy to to, to, to clean easy to, to disinfect easy to, to throw in your bag with you when you go easy mm -hmm. to charge um internal battery lasts a long time um to, only want, only one thumbprint needed i want well, my i don't know why my flashlight's on but hold on a second i want to show something because this is my phone right this is how big this is. Yes. It's it's not, this is smaller than your phone. It's just awesome. I need to yeah. ask you, is the thumbprint reader a separate charge to the subscription? It is. It is. And, I'm, and I'm glad you asked. It's it's a 149 so $149 mm -hmm. to have the the scanner delivered to you. Right. Um, and, and that's, you know, sole and separate from uh, when you pay for your monthly subscription and right. again not not every state requires thumbprints now i was right. surprised at how many notaries in states outside of california do it as a best practice and mm -hmm. still purchase their scanner i thought that was really cool mm -hmm. um because i just thought i was trying to solve a problem that we had in california right. Right. and it turns out that a lot of people uh thumbprint just as a best practice and so yeah. we ship these all over the country um, and, and, and love, um, you know, just, just seeing people's reactions, um, yeah. and, and, and providing them with that better solution.
it's a it's a fantastic product and i have been shouting it from the rooftops since i got it so um i'm really happy to to have you here and talk about it like this i also want to tell people that when i've had questions about this i've talked to nick i don't know that i've ever talked to anybody else when i've had and i have reached out to you to be fair but you reach back i haven't had any um call my team or whatever you you have one-on-one -on -one with me with questions i've had i think that your availability to your customers is fantastic nick i'm sure that's not yeah. for like everybody on the planet but i think that if people ask specific questions they can really get help from you and you talk about this a lot and people talk about this a lot so i just think that's I, really awesome of you i i appreciate that i i about a year and a half ago i, I about at the end of at the end of 2021, I I decided as we built the signing service, um, it was getting larger. And as Jurat was building as well, too, and getting larger, and we were having users um, that were they were you know requiring more of my time overall for development and oversight. That I, I took the step out of the field as a signing agent, and and now you know I run the signing service, but I'm not in the field with them unless there's an emergency and I need to be. So that was a huge step for me because, it, I mean, it, it unfortunately cut a lot of income I was making from those signings, but it was the only way I could I could go all in and commit everything to right. this company and to Jurat. And so that is, the, what you what you talked about is very important to us, which is communication with people who understand the product. And that is, at this point, me. I handle all that communication. If you email support at juratinc.com, it's me. If you yeah. email any other company resource, I'm going to respond. And 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 of course, being a human, um, I'm I'm liable to make a mistake or have an oversight or miss an email. But it's me. It's me doing everything so that I can ensure that um, you know the right things are said and people understand the product uh, the way that I want them to. And as we build all of that. Uh, all of the resources have been spent more on the back end development, and I still manage everything front end with the consumer, so that we could just keep that a nice, sustainable, streamlined experience for everybody involved as we continue to grow and scale. So I appreciate you saying that because it's it's a lot, um, and and there'll be often times I'll be off hours just calling a notary to discuss something mm -hmm. uh, that they might need help with at the table. But but being a notary myself. I'm the hardest on myself because I know that this product is is vital, right? So I, I've had people call me and they say, gosh, I'm in the middle of a signing and I need help with this. How do I do this thing or this feature? And, mm -hmm. and being able to explain it to them um, makes me feel good because the worst thing in my mind is if they can't use the product the way it should be used and then they have a bad taste in their mouth, the signers have a bad taste in their mouth and we didn't have our goal accomplished, which is just right. provide a better experience. Right. Well, I love that. So you've been teasing it so why don't you share with us what are exciting new and exciting updates that are coming that you're willing to share with us so th there's a lot and and you know i think one of our things that goes back to what we just talked about just a lot of community involvement a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of me doing the the discussions with people um i, I always search for feedback uh, from our users i always ask for it i always try to provide as, as many possibilities for people to uh, participate and provide that feedback and that to, to request features. I'm in California, but every other state might have a different set of use cases. Mm -hmm. These users might want to do things a little bit differently. And I need to be aware of that. I'm, uh, this is a very simple example. This, we can't identify somebody in California based on personally known uh, you know, methodology. We can't mm -hmm. do that in California. But mm -hmm. so many other states, they say, you, know, you got to be able to just hit a button for personally known. And I said, really, you guys could do that? That's so cool. Yeah, that so, is cool. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we always try to get that feedback so that we can develop the product in a way that's going to provide features for people specific to their use case or state. And so okay. um, we've always done a good job of that and constantly updated the app. But coming up, and the next couple of weeks, which will be already released by the time people see this mm -hmm. video, um, we're going to bring uh, a brand new web experience right now. Uh, if you look at it this way, the, the type of notary who uses our app most is the person who uh, creates their notary journal in entry contemporaneously with the Notary Act. So at the same time, and there's a lot of states or a lot of notaries who don't do that at the table and they want to be able to do it at wow. home on the computer and our web interface doesn't allow for that our web interface is read and export only 
So we have an entirely new reskinned and 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 the full feature web app coming that will allow you to create journal entries in the web environment that will also be synced to the servers. Um, and with those features are, are, are going to include a lot of state specific things that people have requested. For example, we have uh, something called Texas mode, which mm -hmm. is going to be something where people can just hit the button and it will omit the serial number being captured when they do their ID scans. Now, this is really important for Texas, hence the name Texas mode. They can't capture that serial number, but that shouldn't mean that they are punished for using a feature that right. we developed the ID scanning. Right. It is meant to simplify the process. Right now, they scan it, all the data gets pulled, but then they have to manually delete the the, the serial number, which gotcha. is unfortunate. So Texas gotcha. mode will allow us to just omit that right away, and that way they don't have to manually do that. So if Texas mode is going to come out, there's going to be a privacy mode that will allow the, the entries to look um, hashed and, and not recognizable. This was also a request from a user uh, who just said, hey, even though it's a rare occurrence, you know, I might have my phone down and my journal is open. And then what if somebody can see the name of the signers? Very, very rarely do I think that opportunity would present itself. But why not develop a feature set that will allow them to achieve a bit more sense of privacy and to have more confidence? So yeah. um, the biggest set of features coming up is really just getting the web experience functional wise on par with the mobile experience, which is going to happen. And then the next set of features after that, which is coming hopefully towards the end of 2023 is going to be uh, the introduction of an apostille tracking solution as well as a remote online notary specific journal so right now you can still journal your own entries right. i know you want to, you want to talk about the apostille stuff i can see it in your eyes <laughs> right now you could you could enter your yeah. journal entry for a ron signing but it's not specific for ron and that to me is not good enough so i want to have a solution where people can um, upload their CSV files uh, mm -hmm. and, and have those stored uh, as well. I also want you to be able to, as a notary, actually store the recording, the AV recording. Now, it's interesting because on that note, many laws require you or your, your journal entry to actually store that file. But if you actually look at the way the majority of RON solutions manage that is they, they don't store it there they give you a link that can access it oh. now technologically speaking that is not the same no, it's not. as having it hosted and stored in the same environment as the data so do i think anybody has had any legal issues with it yet uh, no i don't but do i want to provide a solution that will future proof you as a notary yeah. um, and allow you to to ha have everything sole and separate from the ron provider that's where we're going with that so those those two new products are are, are that's in development exciting. as well yeah they're also yeah. going to be so in it and ready to go when california finally gets their acting gear with ron you're going to be yes. ready to go nick that's yeah, awesome. I, I think that's the goal is just to make sure that we address the needs of of all the different types of notaries and their work environments. Yeah. Again, if they're if they're doing Apasti work, if they're also a raw notary, you know, providing them with a journal that can they can house their raw entries and their in-person tangible uh, notarization journal entries. Nobody can do that. And nobody's in a better place than us to provide that for people which is exciting. It's just, it's exciting to be where we are now and to, to have the traction we already have. And then to, to say, you know what, we can build this, we can build it better and we can, we can really be uh, the solution uh, that we want to be for more people. Can we talk about the apostille feature coming out? Do we, you want to talk too much about it? We we can talk about the, the, the premise and the concept, but sure. I have no tangibles for like how it looks yet, of course, okay. but the 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 need is is there for a solution uh, that allows Apostle agents to actually uh, properly track uh, the entire event, the entire process from start to finish. It might be multiple days, it might be multiple weeks, what? and and we need to provide a solution that allows not just the 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 potential notarization event to be somehow linked to it. Which again, as a notary journal already, we're the only ones that can do that effectively right will allow you to 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 literally link logically associate a notary entry that you actually created in the notary e journal portion mm -hmm. of it and have that reference in the apostille tracking portion of it which will be really awesome um allowing you to do things like 
and, and, and here's, here's, here's an example. At the, at the end of your notary journal entry now, you have the option to send an email. Um, so you can put the signer's email and it'll send the email uh, to the signer. It pretty much gives them a rundown of the notarization event and then who the notary was that handled it. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at the, the, the development of email alerts, um, that's where we're going with the FOST tracking as well to allow you to notify your people of Shut the up. the steps as you go through the steps so that they're not asking you every time uh, what's up. going on. They can, I, 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 I'm excited about it. I'm excited Heck about so it. There's, am there's, I. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's still, there's still so much work to be done and that's what makes it so fun is that there's opportunity there. Um, and it's, it's not going to be some boring Excel sheet um like most people use they use some form of excel sheet yes or we do that attract this and this yes. um it, it's going to be more robust and it's going to be um uh, ideally something that people are are going to gravitate towards more than their wow. current solution so that's, that's what we have in the works i am excited about that i really am and i think it's cool that you're doing things that are specific to certain states i think it's you're just making this the most usable product that there is um before we finish up, I want to remind our viewers not to forget about the notary resource page. Um, this resource page has the potential to save you between, between $800 and $1,000 in the best training service platforms and supplies in the business. All that information will be in the description below. You can also find links to Jurat Inc. and the notary e-journal in the resource page as well. I want to tell people if you're a notary and loan signing agent and having a paper journal is one of the most complicated things about your business, I encourage you to check out Jurat Inc., the notary e-journal, and don't forget in that process to buy the notary resource page. Nick, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to sit with me today and kind of walk through the meat and potatoes of this product, which I just... It's, it you're making it better and better and better. I mean, what else can you add to this as the yeah. years? Can you integrate the thumbprint? Can you do, I mean, what else can you possibly do to this thing? Because the things that you have coming up sound so exciting. I, my imagination couldn't go much further. So I'm glad I'm not the one in charge of it. Well, we're, we're excited to, to keep, keep developing it um, and keep it. We, we, we're not, we're not taking our foot off the gas. Um, that's, it's it's if we if we did we would be fine but that's not how I am as a person I want it to be better and I want it to grow and I want it to provide a better solution for more people so I think if there's anything I'm leaving people with as they watch this interview it's that you know take your journaling seriously because it's it's such an integral part of what you do as a notary it'll protect you it'll protect the principal signers and and that's why we develop more features like the audit logs and things that they will protect you as a notary. Take it seriously and find the best solution for you. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, you might be a, a, a hardbound journal person. You might just like to write. That's your MO. That's fine. Mm -hmm. that's right. Find the best journal out there that's going to fit the bill for you. Now, and if you want to try something that's going to be more, you know, technologically advanced like ours, um, give it a shot with the free yeah. trial and see how you like it and, and make up your mind from there. Because at the end of the day, you took an oath uh, as a notary, as a public servant, your, your job has so much credibility and integrity behind it. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I just want people to feel like the people who are manufacturing products, like the way we are manufacturing mm -hmm. a solution for you guys, that, that we have the same type of integrity and dedication to our people. And as a notary myself, that's where it all stems from giving back, uh, in a way that's tangible and building a product that is going to truly help people uh, in their profession. So that's really what we're doing. And I just love being a part of it. So anytime I get a chance to talk about it, um, I'm happy to. Well, thank you so much. I, I very much enjoyed this time with you and talking about it. And I'm very excited about what's coming in the future. So thank you again for sitting down with me. And we'll see you guys very soon. Awesome. Bye thank now. you. I hope that you guys loved that as much as I did. I know it was a long interview and he gave us a lot of information, but my goodness, what an amazing journey he has had in providing us notaries with an amazing resource. I hope you will not sleep on the opportunity to get a hold of this journal. The information for that will be in the resource page. That resource page is $20. So Go ahead and click the link below and you can log in and get your free trial with him. 
I'm excited about this and I hope that you guys will check it out. And if you love your paper journals and you love Clyde's journal, I hope that you'll stick with that too. That interview is coming up next month with Clyde Hepner about the integrity journal, but leave a comment for Nick, leave a comment for me. I would love to hear from you. And of course, again, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Don't miss the next heavy hitter interview that's coming until next week. You guys take care of yourself and let's get your journal game in check. See you later.